favorite time of the year it is syrup season so this is a little bit of a different video than what you're used to seeing on my channel it's a hobby I got into um, where I make my own maple syrup right from the backyard so um, if you're interested stay tuned here to uh, see how I do it we found our first tree for the day this is a red maple that we're gonna tap here so basically I have a special drill bit but you can use any drill bit you want and you drill a hole about two inches deep in the tree. And then once you drill the hole, go ahead and hook a uh, tap up to the tree that has a hose that runs into a bucket. It's actually really simple. You take a, you've got your, uh, hey, my dog wants our, our bucket in this case a milk jug, mine. Um, but you take the tap itself and you have to you push this hose onto the tap so this part's going to go in the tree now like so but I got to um, connect the other end to this uh, gallon jug for smaller trees like this I use a jug for bigger trees I use a uh, five gallon bucket you can see we're going to go ahead and thread that in there so this is what we need and now we just need a hole for the tap to go into the way you use a mouth to set it in there so you want to keep the drill bit spinning to try to extract as much uh, sawdust as possible so if we take a closer look you can actually see the sap it's a Relatively warm day today, probably about 40 degrees out. It might be hard to see on camera. We're gonna try to get a, get a shot of it. We got a little bit of sap running out of it. You can see the darker color on the uh, bark maybe there. So now, like I said, we're gonna take the tap, put it in the hole we just drilled, and go ahead just with the mallet reel. Real light, no need to run there too much. So this is a, uh, we'll angle this down, of course. <coughs> oh, that's what we got. Zoom out, Let's see what it actually looks like. So this is what I do on a smaller tree. We'll do a, we'll do a, maybe a bigger tree or show you what a bigger tree looks like. I'll use two taps into a bucket for a bigger tree, but to give you give you an idea of what what's involved so it's not um not too labor intensive at this point so basically next step is you wait for the sap to run into the into the bucket into the gallon jug and then uh, collect it and then we evaporate it off but that'll be probably another week or so once I get enough to do an evaporator run so we tapped one tree at the uh, top of the hill you just saw and we came down here to the very bottom there's a, a stream down here very bottom of the property um, the flats here, and uh, this is where uh, the, the sugar bush is, so to speak. So this is where all the uh, the, the main majority, the, the biggest group of the maples on our property. These are um, uh, red maple trees that I'm tapping here. That's basically all we have. Um, but I tapped these some of these trees down here last night, and you can see uh, we're going to show you what it looks like when the sap's running. Um, you can see over here. This is actually a really good sign, considering I tapped these probably. <laughs> Late, uh, late last night and in the evening last night and it's about midday now and um, you can actually see if you you look close enough you can see the uh, you can see the level of sap in here so this is just from less than 24 hours and you can see this is a smaller tree one tap you can see that probably about a quarter of the way filled you can actually see the sap in the line it's coming out of the coming out of the tree, of course, and then flowing through this line, real hard to see, probably on camera. But it's basically dripping into that, dripping into that gallon jug. So we're gonna give you a, give you a quick walkthrough of uh, different trees, and, and like I said, I tapped a couple of them last night down here for about ten total, um, and I got some more to do today right now. We'll just do a quick uh, quick walk through so you can see. 
relatively flat. The white buckets I used to sort of blend in with the snow right now. You can see bigger trees get two two taps and bucket. I need to put a lid on this bucket here. I didn't do that last night. This is a bigger tree as you can tell. You can look in here and see a decent amount of sap. You see a little bit of debris there. That's just because number one, I didn't put the cover on and, and number two, you're just gonna get that. So I filter that out a number of times before it gets made into syrup. You can see all the all the maple trees down here. This is what the setup looks like with the top on the bucket. So you can see this is a bigger, bigger tree. So it gets two taps and a bucket. You see two taps and a bucket, two taps and a bucket down that way, two taps and a bucket. So basically I'm gonna be checking these pretty often now, now that I got them tapped. You can feel it before you open it, and this does actually have some weight to it. Yes, yeah, really good sign. So this bucket is uh, about a quarter of the weight filled. Like I said, that's less than, less than 24 hours, so when we get good conditions like this, freezing at night and, and thawing during the day, uh, we can get a lot of sap quickly. So I think next tree I'm going to tap is uh, right next to this one here. So I'll show you a video of that. And then uh, after that, I think you get the idea. I'm just going to do that to a bunch of other trees and wait for the buckets to fill up. Simple as that. Of course, I don't have any fun out here uh, on the four-wheeler at all. It's uh, strictly business. So it's been about four days since I tapped the uh, first round of trees, so I'm going around now with the four-wheeler to uh, collect the uh, the buckets of sap that are at the trees and combine them into buckets that are on my four-wheeler, um, and, and I'm taking them back to the house. sportsman four-wheeler here. It's so basically I run up to the trees and take the bucket from the tree and dump it in these buckets which actually makes it really easy. Um, you know it makes it a lot easier than trying to hold the buckets on the side of the four-wheeler or anywhere else. But I actually made it last in the front. Maybe the last is actually the piano hinges here and the uh, buckets come off pretty easily. So one week down so a little less than a week even. We got a uh, actually a very good yield. Got 30 gallons total. You see it's sort of a sort of a mess in here, but this is what the sap looks like right out of the tree. Um, sometimes when you first pour, it's actually a little uh, soapy looking. Get some bubbles. Um, it has a slight tint to it. It's not perfectly clear, like a yellowish uh, tint. Um, anyway, you can see buckets galore, buckets everywhere. So I actually have 30 gallons worth, which is actually really good for the first week. Um, you can see that there. So the next step is to filter it. So I have a uh, filter here with the screen, pretty fine uh, mesh screen. It just any, uh, any debris. It's not going to get super fine particles, uh, but that's fine because we're going to use a uh, almost like a coffee filter later on. So. We're going to get those fine particles later on, but this is uh, good to get some filter right now. So last night you saw the uh, filtering process, which is 
necessary but not necessarily fun. <laughs> Today is the fun part. So this is called the evaporator. Of course there are a number of different ways you could do this. However, this has been uh, this has worked best for me. It's wood fired. I make a fire down there. I actually added this fan this year to increase the airflow and, and help help things get started quicker. We can see it's just cinder blocks, some bricks at the back, makeshift chimney which uh, goes down through the cinder block. Right, it's cooking pretty good. The idea is you want to get some red hot coals going, get the fire really going, and then I'm going to set some evaporator pans, uh, stainless steel pans, basically serving serving pans on the uh, on the cinder blocks on the side there and I'm going to put the sap in and it's going to start boiling off the, uh, the water and we're going to be left with syrup. So basically I do um, some of the process out here uh, to get it to get the majority of the uh, the water uh, evaporated off and then what I'll do is I'll take it inside and on our uh, stove top and, and do the final. The reason I'll do it all on the stove top uh, for me, number one, I have a lot to do need more surface area than a, a stove top burner I'll give you. Um, second is cost, I don't have to buy you know, propane inside propane whereas out here is wood which in my case is free. And last and maybe most importantly is the uh, fact that most fans are going to have a hard time keeping up with this much evaporation. It's going to evaporate very quickly. Um, so out here you don't have to worry about that. Since uh, it's just going to be open air, it's going to evaporate into the air, that's what we want, so don't have a problem there. So let's go ahead and uh, go throw the pans on, and as soon as I throw the pans on, I'm going to want to uh, put some sap in there. We don't want the pans cooking off with no, uh, no liquid in them. up already. So you can see the chimney's going now, which is exactly what we want. We want this chimney to take all the creosote and smoke and and that um, up the chimney and out away from the uh, pan, which is what it's doing. You can see there is some evaporation going on already. This is one hour later. Just added some wood. You can see now the chimney. Be hard to tell, but it's uh, mainly heat coming out of there, which is good. You don't see much smoke. Um, however, you can see the pans are starting to evaporate more. Just like cloud looking. Uh, smoke here as the uh, the water evaporated off of the sap which is exactly what we want and the color of the sap has actually turned a little darker uh, like a brown less clear more of a brown this pan at the back is actually going quicker because it's the hottest see it's starting to bubble uh, but nothing's boiling off yet it hasn't gotten quite that hot you'll see it get hotter and uh, actually start boiling but uh, we're off to a good start here. It's dark out now. Um, the sap has been boiling out on the evaporator for about 12 hours and uh, we just pulled it off and we're filtering it. I'm using this cone filter here not to get any fine uh, particles out. We did this outside as well but it's just too dark to film. All 
All right, so we're getting close. You can see more uh, more foaming, which is a good sign. And uh, the whole kitchen smells uh, sugary at this point, so that's uh, unfortunately you can't smell through the camera. That's one of the uh, probably one of the best parts. The whole house smells good, um, but it's definitely got a syrup, uh, sugar kind of candy smell to it at this point. So we're gonna cook it off a little more, and when it really starts foaming, we'll know we're close. We'll check it um, in the graduated cylinder with the hydrometer uh, to check how many bricks it is, and that'll officially tell us when we're done. And when we are done, we're gonna go ahead and pour it um, as soon as we can while it's still hot, because obviously it's gonna flow better when it's hot. And once it uh, cools off, it's, the viscosity is gonna go up, so it's gonna be a lot harder to pour into the different jars. So. Um, I guess you'll see me as soon as this starts foaming over. We check it; it's good. We uh, we'll go ahead and bottle it real real quick, and uh, we'll see how much we got. Uh, my math told me at, at 50 to one, 50 uh, gallons of sap, one gallon of syrup. Um, using 30 gallons as a reference, we should get about 0.6 gallons, so a little bit over half a gallon. So um, we'll see. That's a really good yield for just one week. Last year, I think I got probably about a gallon of syrup total. So uh, one week we're doing uh, the whole half of the season from last year. So definitely, uh, definitely really good news. It actually just overflowed a little bit on me, um, which means we're probably right about where we need to be. I just took it off the stove, so we'll check real quick. We'll check for reading but I think we're probably there if not slightly over let's see the time is of the essence of this portion of the project let's see where we settle out at we are right there you can see that you can't see that red line probably but we're right where we need to be. Perfect. So we're going to go ahead and pour it into the bottles. Be very careful. So thanks for watching. We have one, uh, one final uh, test here we're going to do, but uh, that's essentially the, the process. And if you liked what you saw, you'll feel free to like and subscribe um, you know, to the channel here. And uh, if you're interested in trying this yourself, obviously you need the red maples. But other than that, it's fairly cheap to get into. I've... Um, included a link uh, links in the description for the uh, different products I used in this video so uh, feel free to check those out as well really good yield for our first uh, first week here and it's still pretty hot to the touch see it's got a nice uh, nice color to it and of course here's the finale so if you like this video let me know in the comments here and uh, I might make a couple more as the uh, season continues here